Books, books, I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. March was a crazy month, an absolutely insane month. I took a vacation, got a new little furry friend. <laughs> this is Swiper. It was really busy at work, but even with all of that, I still got a bunch of reading done. March is really the first time that I've taken a major vacation in a while, and the first time that I attempted to document that vacation. Um, but honestly, I had no idea what I was doing, so what I ended up with was a bunch of like random short video clips that kind of uh, documented my trip to Costa Rica. So I apologize in advance that a lot of these uh, segments are probably going to be very short. Um, hopefully this will give me some much needed skills and information for the next trip that I take, but uh, I hope you enjoy hearing about my adventures in March. Here's my pre-packing pile for my list. I've got all my clothes picked out, my uh, Niffler backpack, and a couple books that I'm going to bring with me. Um, I have way more to go, but making pretty good progress. What is this? Day two? Technically? Um, What's today? Monday? This? Today is... Monday. Hi everyone, Chris here. It's day two in Costa Rica. Found a little uh, hammock that I'm going to take a snooze in and hopefully read a book in. But first, I will do a quick uh, 180 of the jungle. We're in the jungle, baby. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Jungle stuff. <laughs> <laughs> More stuff to come later. <laughs> so it is day four here in beautiful Costa Rica. I'm about five chapters into uh, Seize the Night, and I've read a bunch of these books by Cheryl and Kenyon before, but I feel like this one really just does not care <laughs> about, like, a plot or characters. Like, it's pretty corny, but it's also really funny. I find it hilarious anyway, um, the way that she describes the, uh, the steamy scenes and... Uh, one of the characters made pasta for another character with um, macaroni that was shaped like uh, anatomy, let's just say. <laughs> I find that really amusing. So, <laughs> Seize the Night is a entertaining read so far. Um, yeah, hopefully I'm not bothering anyone with my giggling and blushing while I'm reading this. But now, I am going to go jump in the pool. And today, we are walking through a coffee field. We are uh, in between coffee seasons, so I believe the plants have already been picked over. But this plantation is actually right across the street from where uh, I'm staying. So, nice place to take a little walk in the morning, in the evening. But they say, don't stay past dark because there may be chupacabras. <laughs> Just kidding. And he's coming back and they do the best. See how the bean is turning over. Somebody <laughs> else? <laughs> All right, it's 
is a little cloudy today, but I thought I could take you on a little walk with me through the jungle. Here is one of my favorite places in the resort. This is where they do um, like water therapy, water treatments, and look at the view from over these chairs over here. Let me get a, a good close-up so you can get the full effect. It's a little cloudy today, but I mean, there's two perfect chairs right here just to be able to gaze out over the Central Valley. I mean, is that not amazing? And now I am back to the main path. I am hunting for a hammock. Hammock hunting. Let's see if I can find one. I found a great spot the other day, but I don't remember where it was because this place is huge, so I'm just going to wander around until I see a sign for hammocks and we'll see what happens. Fork in the road, which way should I go? We're gonna go this way. I love how everything here is so vibrant. And I think I see a little hideout over here. Oh, yep, there's the sign. And are they being used? Dun dun da da. And here we go. A little hammock hole. Yay, just for me. Okay, so it's a little dark here because I'm kind of um, under a tent. I did not bring my ring light to the uh, little hammock hole here, but um, wanted to update you on my reading progress. I'm about halfway through um, Seize the Night, and finally, finally, finally just got to uh, a steamy scene. I have to say, in some of her other books, uh, you get to the steam much earlier. This one takes a little while to get going. Like, um, there's very there's a lot of teasing in the beginning. A lot of teasing, but no action until about halfway through. So if you're reading these books for the action, which, I mean, let's be honest, I am, <laughs> that was a little frustrating. However, there's enough, like, super, super corny and silly dialogue uh, to keep me entertained. So um, the actual plot, because there is a plot to this book, <laughs> not just sex. Uh, there is a plot. It's starting to get mildly interesting, so we'll see what happens. And then next, I am about a quarter of the way into Crown of Midnight, Sarah J. Maas. Again, this is the sequel to Throne of Glass, which most of you will know I really enjoyed. Okay, this hammock is swinging, so sorry if the camera's moving. Um, I can't stop it. But, um, I'm really liking this one so far, too. Um, oh, bug, bug. Yes, there's a lot of bugs in the jungle. Um, I'm really enjoying Crown of Midnight. All of my favorite characters are back. And I'm really interested to see, like, where the actual plot of the story is going. I have some thoughts. Um, it was kind of hinted at in the last book that the king is like kind of not a great person and there's like a underground rebel movement going on but we only heard about it but I feel like we're gonna explore it. it well it's already started being explored but I feel like we're gonna get much more into it maybe as the plot goes along um I don't know I like the relationship that is developing between uh Selena and um her captain of the guards. I think that's really, uh, really sweet. We'll see what happens. And <laughs> that's going to be my final check-in for now since the bugs are attacking me. Uh, wish me luck that I don't die in the jungle.
look at the mist coming off the water. So you can see it here, and you can see it hitting the water. Last full day in Costa Rica, and it's raining. Pura vida. <laughs> Pura vida. It was lovely to swim in the rain in Costa Rica. It is a beautiful, sunny Saturday here in uh, Alajuela, Alajuela, and I'm getting ready to go home. I'm so sad. It doesn't feel like it's even been a whole week, but I'll talk a bit more about this when I have time to do like a, I don't know, really think about this trip, but um, it was amazing. I mean, clearly it's absolutely amazingly beautiful here and uh, I've had some some moments some really really good moments and I also did get a lot of reading done surprisingly uh, we'll see how much more I can get done on the plane today but I'm about halfway through uh, both Seize the Night and Crown of Midnight so I think I've made pretty good progress all things considered but now it's time to say goodbye Oh, oh, Pura Vida, I don't want to leave you. Okay. <laughs> Signing off for now, and I will see you when I am back in New York. And now the time has come. Bye-bye, Costa Rica. Pura Vida. You were so nice. I had such a good time. And I'll do a little... There is the yoga room. And the purple pink wall. So cute. And yeah, there is nothing behind me, so <laughs> note to self, don't walk backwards. Adios, amigos. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Who wants to play? Who wants to play? Swiper. 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 Get it, Swipes. <laughs> Get it, Swipes. Get it. Oh, you're so tough. You're so tough. You're such a tough girl. You're such a tough girl, Swiper. You're such a tough girl. Who's a tough girl, Swiper? <laughs> Who's a tough baby? You're so tough. You're so tough. You're so tough. You're so tough. <laughs> you're so tough. Get it. Get it. You're so tough. You're such a tough girl. <laughs> okay. It is now like the third weekend in March. And, um, yeah, this is my first vlog update since coming back from vacation. If I'm being honest, I, I don't know. I just, I haven't wanted to do an update. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's been really crazy at work since I've been back and also in life. Roscoe says he's been keeping me busy as well. <laughs> Why are you wet? Why are you wet? Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roscoe. I'm going to go find out why you're wet now. Be right back. He stuck his head in the water bowl, so and no big deal. Anyway, back to reading. Since I've been back from Costa Rica, I'm still reading all of the books that I was planning on reading for the month, and I have finished two, which are The Gilded Ones, which was left over from February, and Seize the Night, which was uh, one of my vacation books. So I'll start with the Gilded Ones first because this was left over from February. Someone is climbing up my leg while I'm trying to talk. Rasco, can you let me do my video, please? Thank you. <laughs> the Gilded Ones was left over from February. You might remember I only had very few chapters left. I couldn't get it done before I left for vacation. So I have finished it since I've come back. I think this is a really solid YA fantasy. I enjoyed it. I didn't, like, love it. I'm not going to gush over it, but I did enjoy it. I think it's a really good story, a solid read. And I don't know if there's a sequel for this one. I think there is, but if there is, I'd definitely give it a try. 
And then as far as Seize the Night goes, on one hand, I really enjoyed this one because it is very silly. It's very silly and ridiculous and it made me laugh out loud multiple times. But on the other hand, like the only reason that you read a book like this is for the steam. And like I said in a previous uh, check-in, there's not a lot of steam in this book. There is way too much plot, like way too much plot. There should not be that much plot in a steamy supernatural romance mo uh, movie and a supernatural romance book. There should not be that much plot. There should be more steam, let's just say. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that for now. I am also super, super close to finishing two other books. Uh, Brit Marie was here in Crown of Midnight. I like I have just a few chapters left in both of these and I'm loving both of these books. Absolutely loving them. Let's start with Brit Marie was here. If you read um, A Man Called Oove, this book is very similar, very, very similar, where we kind of have an older person who, um, you know, has a hard time connecting with people. She's a little bit misunderstood. And now she's like in a new place, meeting new people. And I want to talk more about this book a lot, but let's just say that this book has made me very emotional. Um, yeah, I really, really like it. I love it. Do I love it as much as A Man Called Oove? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one because that was one of my favorite books last year or the year before. I really, really, really loved that book. I really like this one too, so that's going to be hard to decide, but this one's really, really good. If you liked that one, you will like this one. And then Crown of Midnight, I'm really enjoying this one too. I laugh whenever I talk about it because when I first read Sarah J. Moss, you know, I wasn't exactly super positive about it, but I really like this series. I've been enjoying it. I really enjoyed Throne of Glass and I've really been enjoying Crown of Midnight. I don't foresee that changing in the last few chapters, so I'm just going to say, um, this was another great book in the series, and I'm definitely going to keep reading it. I really, really like it. So that means I still have three other books that I'm reading. Uh, the Green Mile, which I'm a little over halfway through on. Um, I'm familiar with the story. I've seen the movie. Uh, the book, like reading it again, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It has been a while. So I didn't remember like all the details and I don't even know if all these details are actually in the movie. I'm going to have to go back and watch it and do like a comparison, but the book is really good. The book is really good. The movie's good. The book is good. And I can't wait to compare the two. Next up, The Raven King, the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle. I've really been enjoying this series, and again, I'm really enjoying this book. It's been a great wrap-up to the series so far. Um, there's a couple things that I think were a bit predictable, but then there's other things that have happened that were not predictable at all. So I think it's a good mix of both, and I just... I really like this world. I love the characters. I love everything about it. And I feel like I'm going to be sad when this one is over, knowing that there is no more to the series. Thankfully, there are other books by Maggie Stifebiter that I have not read, so I'm definitely going to seek those out. And then last but not least, uh, Legendborn. Again, this was recommended to me by one of my followers over on Bookstagram, and I've really been enjoying this one. I had no idea this book was so much about Arthurian legend, and so far it's done a really good job of taking Arthurian legend, but also like American history, and kind of merging those two, which sounds weird when I say it out loud, but when you read it, it doesn't feel weird. So we have a young uh, African American girl, and she really learns a lot about not only her family's history, but like the history of her culture in America and how that crosses with Arthurian legend is really cool. Like it's really cool. It's a really different take and I really like it. Again, really enjoying this one. Um, not finished with it yet. I'm very curious to see how this one ends because I feel like the ending of the book is either gonna cement it as a must read or it could go the other way. So... <laughs> 
holding off complete judgment till the end, but I do have high hopes and high expectations that it will end on a high note. In other news, besides reading, I did go on my first uh, bargain book shopping excursion the other weekend. I wanted to film while I was doing that. However, I don't know, I'm, st I'm still really awkward about like filming in public and this space, like it's a bookstore that's basically in like the basement of a library. So it's pretty small and it was very crowded and there was a lot of older people. And I did take my my phone out at one point to film and take, make, take a couple pictures. And even doing that, I feel like people gave me weird looks. So I did not do it. However, I did wanna share the books I picked up quick. I was gonna do another video, but I thought, eh, I'll just do it here. So really quick, these are the books that I picked up. Bargain book hunting. Uh, first is The Crown by Kira Cass. This is the fifth book in the selection series. I did have The Air, which is number four, and this one's number five. So now I can finally finish the series. I read the first three last year, The Selection, The Elite, and The One. But then I know the air book four kind of starts off a new story. So I was waiting until I had this one so I could read them all at once. So super excited about that. And next up, I have One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston. I have not read any of her books since uh, Red, White, and what is it called? Red, White, and Blue? Red, White, and Royal? Red, White, and Royal Blue. Blue red, white, and royal blue. Say that five times fast. I read that book back before I was doing booktube and bookstagram stuff, but really, really, really cute book. Um, I've heard this one is not as good, but still cute, so hopefully it will be whenever I get around to reading it. Next up, I picked up Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I've been wanting to read this ever since I read a uh, what is it? Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, or it might have been the Bane Chronicles. Maureen Johnson is one of the writers that helped Cassandra Clare with some of those short stories from the Shadow Hunter worlds. And I know this is a popular book and people like it. So when I saw it for cheap, I was figured, hey, why not? Next up, another YA fantasy, and I have no idea how to pronounce this, but Labazona, Labazona. It's like a werewolf story, but also is about like Argentinian heritage. Argentinian, I hope that's how you say it. Um, Argentinian heritage, which I think is really cool. I have not read any YA fantasy that features like folklore that's from like South America, Latin America. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, I need to look up some more reviews about it to see what people have said about it. I think I've only seen one person on bookstagram talking about it so i don't know if it was super popular but it sounds really cool so hopefully it will be next up i picked up this bookstagram darling the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed i have never read anything by taylor jenkins reed but i've heard of a ton of her books a ton of them they're all over bookstagram and booktube and i am really interested in seeing that show based on her book daisy jones and the six i really want to watch that and i really want to read something by her so saw this one on sale picked it up i've heard good things about it so Definitely want to try and get to it this year. Next up, a, another YA, The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. I've heard that this one is not as good as her Divergent series, but I love Divergent and I want to read something else by her. So it was cheap. Why not give it a try? Another find I was super excited about is The Serpent of Venice by Christopher Moore. If you've never read a Christopher Moore book, you are missing out because he is absolutely hysterical, hysterical. And I have read almost his entire bibliography. I have been missing this book. I have been missing this book. This book has been on my Amazon wish list since like 2017. And yes, I could have bought it at any time, absolutely. However, I have found the majority of my Christopher Moore books 
bargain book hunting. So I really, really, really wanted to find this one at a bargain bookstore, and I finally did. Not only that, it has blue sprayed edges. So exciting. Really, really, really excited about this one. This is probably my favorite find uh, of the day. Next up is kind of a random one, but that is Dragon Haven by Robin Hobb. Ever since I've joined BookTube, I've been hearing so many people talk about Robin Hobb. I've never read any of her books. I really, really want to. I want to get into her. So when I saw this one, I had to grab it. But then, of course, I realized it's volume two of a series I don't have volume one, so I'm going to have to find a volume one at some point. Last but not least, my other favorite of the day, my favorite find is Babel by R.F. Quang. Some of you may remember that I read her Poppy War series uh, recently, last year and the year before. Absolutely loved it. Loved it. So when I heard she was coming out with this book, I knew I wanted to read it. Now, yes, I've been putting it off. So when I saw this one on sale, I was like, oh my God, yes, 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 you are coming home with me. I am definitely going to read this one soon. Out of all the books that I got last week, this is the one that I'm going to read like soon. I don't think I'm going to read it next month because I already have a different uh, adult fantasy in mind, but May, this is going to be on my May TBR. I'm saying it now, so if it's not, uh, you can call me on it, but that's my plan anyway. So that's what I have been up to since I've been back from vacation. Lots of reading, lots more book shopping, and I'll try to do one last uh, check-in before the end of the month, let you know how I did, how I got on with all my other books. And until then, I'll throw in a clip of one of the fur babies to keep you entertained. That was so pretty. You purr like a velociraptor. Oh, mommy sees you got some eye goopies, huh? We'll have to clean your eye goopies. Yeah, she gets them in her left eye a little bit, but that's okay. I just wanted everyone to hear you purr. Say bye-bye, Lola. Boop. Oh, kisses. Thank you, baby. Okay, it is now March 31st, and... I did it. I finished all the books I wanted to read this month. Honestly, I don't know how because this month has just been a blur. It's just been a blur. But I have five books that I finished at the end of the month and I'll just talk about them real quick. And I'll give you my initial reaction of the endings of this book and uh, that'll give you a little sneak peek into what of some of these reviews might be. So starting with Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. Again, the ending didn't really change the way I felt about this book up until this point. As I've mentioned in previous check-ins, I really enjoyed this book. I really liked it. I thought it was fun. I will say that there is something that happened near the end that I thought was incredibly predictable. Like, I saw it coming a mile away, and I'm usually really bad <laughs> at, like, picking up on hints and clues and predicting how things will go. And even I saw this one coming. So part of me rolled my eyes a little bit at that part. Um, you know, it, it, it comes across like it's supposed to be this big twist, but I'm like, it's not a big twist. It was pretty obvious. So I don't know, maybe that's just me. So that's the only thing that maybe like made this book maybe slightly less enjoyable than, say, Throne of Glass, which I also really liked. But overall, I still really liked it, and I'm still definitely going to be continuing with this series. Next up, Brit Marie was here. Wow, I love the ending of this book. Ah, oh, I loved it. It's one of those books that, like, you have to read till the very last page to find out what happens. And, oh man, what happens is so great. It's so much fun. Like I mentioned before, it's very similar to A Man Called Oove, so if that book got you emotional, this book is going to get you emotional. It got me emotional. It took some twists that 
well, I shouldn't say twists. It took some turns in the plot that I did not see coming, things I was shocked about, things that broke my heart, things that legit made me cry. But this was a really great book, really great book. So much great stuff about it. And I can't wait to talk more about it when I do my review. Next up, I finished The Green Mile by Stephen King. This is another book that has a very uh, emotional ending. If you've seen the movie, you know. If you haven't, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But let's just say the ending of this book is, it's hard to read because it's just so sad. Like, sad is not even the right word. Like, I feel like sad is too simple, basic a word for what happens at the end of this book. And I definitely want to talk more about it. It's going to be hard to talk about without talking about spoilers. So, um, but I will do my best. If you do want to talk spoilers, though, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do a separate video that just talks about uh, some of the big uh, plot points in this book and the impact that it had on me, both in the movie and in the book. Next up, I finished Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is another book that had a bit of a big twist at the end, and honestly, I don't quite know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it. On one hand, on the, like, on the surface level, I think the twist that happens at the end of the book is super cool and super fun, but on the other hand, I feel like there should have been some setup for that twist, if that makes sense. I love the twist, but it also feels a bit random, and it could just be because I, I missed something. That could absolutely be true. Because I'm reading so many books at once, it's possible that I missed it. It is totally possible. But if not, um, I don't know. Sometimes when random twists happen, like, I don't know, they don't always land with me personally. So part of me likes it, like, from a story perspective, I really, really like it. From, like, a writing, like, structuring plot perspective, maybe not so much, but it's still, like I said in previous uh, updates, I still really enjoyed this book overall, and I would definitely read a sequel. And if anyone hears that noise, that's one of the ferrets trying to get in the room, so hold on. It was Swiper. She's always trying to get in here, um, but she's a little squirmy because she's just a little girl and doesn't like to be held like some of the other ones yet. I mean, we've only had her a couple weeks now, so okay. Okay. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> Finally, that brings me to the last book I finished in March, which is The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater, the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle. This book, I think, has one of the most unique endings that I've ever read. <laughs> and what I mean by that is once you get towards the end of the book, the chapters start switching through different characters' perspectives, like, very, very quickly. And at first, it's a bit jarring because it's like, why are we switching through all these different characters? And some of them aren't even the main characters. They're like side characters. And you're like, what the heck is going on? But then at some point, it clicks and you're like, oh, wow, this is why this is happening. That is really wild and really cool. So if you're getting towards the end of this book and wondering what the heck is going on, just keep going because it will make sense by the end. And I thought that that was absolutely brilliant. Going to talk more about it when I do a breakdown. As if I did not like this series enough as it is, Maggie Stiefvater, I think, is an amazing writer. She is just a phenomenal writer. And the way that she wrote this book and the style that she writes it in is unlike anything I've ever read before. And I think that is super cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for March. Uh, those are all my books, my trips, my life with furry little friends. I don't have anything else to say. So if you made it this far in the video, you get another swiper you get a swiper, you get a swiper, you get a swiper. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this vlog. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more books and more furry friends coming your way soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading.
Stop trying to get away from me, Swiper. Stop trying to get away from me. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 